Fnatic is also a team that's all, like very, very. Um, they're like a rock. Remaining. They they are very very stable. Mm -hmm. um, they are ha gonna have moments where they finish seconds, first or second remaining. in a tournament. Uh, uh, they they will never actually be knocked out early. So Reserve I think Fnatic time. being the very stable team versus Navi, I guess the inconsistent team at, at the moment. We'll see how things go. Yeah, I always like watching Fnatic though because no matter what, they're always more of an aggressive team than anything else. They mm -hmm. don't like to play passive. They want to push the pace, try to make things happen. But Navi is kind of the same in right, that regard. Right. So there's always guaranteed fireworks, if you will, whenever these two teams meet each other. So I'm just excited to see what kind of strategies are picked because it's actually been quite a while since I've casted any Dota at all. I think the last time I casted actually was the last stream. Like I'm not sure about you. You've kind of been on a hiatus as well. Yeah, right? I mean, I've been casting a lot of replay games, but yeah, same. Uh, but one cool thing I really like about Fnatic Navi. is that they pick, pick very unusual heroes or very they don't have like three go-to heroes you're not going to ban out any players uh when i was doing research on on some of these players like for example era he plays like six or seven eight carries and you could you know rattle them most of them off and look at navi first pick that's wow. a meta to pick. you know this hero to me has always been exceptionally strong, right? right? Like even before they buffed Poison Touch to where it was at least a decent slow with one point, I still feel like he could be really good in lane. He can dominate 1v1s, although people couldn't really find a use for him because after the laning phase, he doesn't the offer like heavy gank potential or anything like that. I feel he is more of not a cheesy hero, but a hero that you have a very specific set of strategies for. Like he doesn't fit a whole lot of composition. So I'm really curious to see what they do with him here. Like on paper, I agree. Like he's one of the best heroes in the game, right? Has a has a skill that keeps anybody alive. Has this AOE minus armor thing um, in terms of synergy I think he worked really well with shadow demon Navi's you disrupt and then you throw out yeah. that that poison uh, not the poison what's that healing thing called healing shadow, wave, wave. shadow wave shadow yeah. wave shadow and wave. It, uh, it hurts a lot of damage but it seems like Fnatic is just going full tank mode of life Stealer and doom which I actually think dazzle works really well against life Stealer with the whole grave and, and slow and minus armor thing what do you feel on that it Navi's just gives you time to actually to make things happen, where normally Doom is just one of those guaranteed, you can't do anything this fight, you kind of have to immediately run or submit yourself to death. I think just having a Dazzle on your team can help quite a bit in terms of just being able to draw the fight out, which the longer you do, Weave's going to be taking down. They picked up a Slardar second, so now you have even more remaining. minus armor on top of that. And against Lifestealer and Doom, Slardar is actually Five crazy strong. Remaining. The big question is, are they going to be using the Slardar as an initiator, or are they going to farm up like a core, skip the Blink time. Dagger, go things like Vanguard or BKB? straight up you know that's the question that i'm really curious about because we're only two picks in there's only so much theory craft that can be done but i would actually prefer to see him and just appear out farming non-initiator type this game okay so why, why don't you think he's actually a good initiator i actually like the blink slider blink slider a lot more well because if you're applying so much to just get this hero farm, right? Like you're one rolling a Slardar, okay. and then you decide to go for a Blink Dagger bad. first. It puts a lot of pressure on your mid game, you know? If you don't succeed mid game, then you've pretty Navi's much wasted an item slot on something bad. that's more or less just gonna get you killed later on. But I guess if you have a Dazzle and you wanna commit to the fight with a Blink Dagger, that would be reasonable as well. I don't know, I, I just, for whatever reason, whenever I see Blink Slardar, I'm, I'm apprehensive about okay. it. Okay, so what if I tell you this is not one Slardar? What if I okay. tell you this is a mid solo remain. Slardar? Because Dendi has actually played Missile Slaughter in the last Fanatics three, four games, one of them. Ban. Yeah. So, depends on what he's up against. If they're imagining that either the Doom, well, I guess Doom could potentially be mid, but I think in that matchup, both heroes just kind of look at each other and farm. Right. If one hero rotates, though, on the Doom, they can definitely go for a kill, especially as Slardar manages to get level 6, ten because Doom has no armor to begin with, and level 1 amps minus 10 now, so I don't know. If it is Five mid Slardar, I want to see it. Okay, yeah. That's I, all I'll say. I mean, I think mid Slardar fits perfectly in terms of what you say. You want to get Reserve the Blink Dagger to, to make him the playmaker, and if he fails or dies a couple of times, well, not all of the eggs is into the Slardar basket. You still have somebody yeah, yeah. else to kind of back you up. And always, you know, there's a Dazzle to kind of keep you out of harm's way. Now, I think the big thing to, to keep in mind here is that Grave, yes, will save you, but the problem with Grave is that you need a lot of points into it to increase, increase that cast range. So if that Dazzle is under level, which is always the issue with Dazzle, Fanatics he is not going to be saving to too many people. Is it going to be a support dazzle? Is that where we're I, I don't know. Right like because look at their bands. Look at Navi's bands. They take out Disruptor. They take out Puck. Two heroes who just hard counter dazzle, right? Yeah. They give a blink initiator, and you have static storm kinetic field, which is pretty obnoxious range, to be honest. And just one good glimpse and a setup ulti, Navi's and that hero just can't do anything. So I think they're putting a lot of emphasis on this dazzle, actually doing a little bit of work here, as opposed to maybe just farming, but or as opposed to supporting. But I suppose we'll see. In Fnatic, they, they pick up a Venomancer. Really, really strong lane support, which they desperately needed because Lifestealer alone and Doom, not really that great in the laning phase, and they did something to kind of counteract that. But I'm kind of liking Navi's draft so far. We'll have to see what they pick third.
Yeah, I wonder if, again, if, if the Azo is going to be the support, are we going to see seconds, something more remaining. supportish, like a CM or, or, or that Chen that Navi is so known for? Uh, but for now, I really remaining. like Venom Master as a pickup. Not only does the uh, poison damage really mitigate on Reserve the uh, Grave's effectiveness, as soon as the Grave ends, the poison tick is going to kill the hero, so that's always nice. Um, also, if the Slaughter does go to Blink Dagger, those uh, poison stings is going to be very, very annoying for him to deal with. The poison wards is going to be annoying for him to deal with. So, so far, good hero pickup. One thing that Fnatic's very weak on is AoE. Like, if, if we see Na'Vi going for that early aggressive push that they're very known for, I mean, Life Slayer Doom and Venomancer is not exactly going to be too good at defending that. I guess the Venom Wards is okay on that, but... Um, they need more. You need setup more. time. Yeah, yeah. Need a little bit more, I think. And even Venomancer is not good wave clearing, like you said. It's just stationary defense for making sure a tower itself doesn't die. Mm -hmm. But we'll see if Navi want to go for, like you said, the early push. Maybe they just want to get wave spammer. Sometimes you don't necessarily need a straight up push lineup, right. but just having something that can clear the waves quickly. Like back in the day, we saw a lot of wind runners and stuff, and they were just sure, power shot sure. spam. Yeah. But they can go that route as well. I think with the kind of first two heroes they pick, I'm, I'm leaning a bit more towards that. Early push is definitely strong, and they decide and to pick up a lich, so they're. Emphasizing lanes pretty heavily here, I would say. Just lanes by and the first three. Lanes and armor, because yeah. all of these heroes have some uh, sick armor skills. So I wonder if Navi is going for a theme draft. Puppy is just uh, trying things out. Puppy is known to, to try a lot of uh, different heroes, which is always, always very refreshing to see. Speaking of new heroes lately, we've seen things like Sniper, Rave Knight, or Rave King, whatever. Sniper is legit, man. Yeah? I'll say that right now. That hero is legit. I mean, Ten can, can Sniper not remaining. actually wreck Fnatic's team right now? I think he actually matches up very well against all those heroes. Yeah. They have no hard initiator. The thing is, I feel like in in actual captain's mode, you have to pick him almost dead last every time. Yeah, exactly. Because somebody just picks up like a clockwork or storm. any yeah, storm, and then you're just like, well, my life is now extremely sad. And their aggressive laning potential isn't even that good. So depending on what they want to do, they could go a little bit greedy with it. That would mean the Slarder would technically have to mid in this case if they decided to go that route. But I don't think it's bad at all. And they do have a lot of protection for him. Yeah, I actually seen Slaughter mid back in the days of Pinoy Dota where they just bottle crow all day and you just yeah, yeah. slittering crush. And I've seen Slaughter actually out lane heroes like Pugna, which is traditionally known as a very strong solo mid laner. So it's definitely very doable, especially when you put uh, a caliber player like Dendi on him. Again, we don't know where that Lich is going to go. Very popular to see sometimes dual lane mid with Lich just kind of deny it and shut down the enemy mid as well. Uh, but remaining. we'll see how, how Navi's going to be playing it. Any any of the bans kind of jumping out to you? You talked about Disruptor and Navi's protecting that battle. What about Fnatic's ban? Well, I think obviously you take the Timber because right now they have three strength heroes. So if they had planned on taking that Sven later into the draft, then getting rid of Timber makes all the sense in the world because he just right. slaughters Lifestealer and Doom. And really, you don't want to have to waste a Doom on a Timber when there's a Dazzle on the team and a Slardar. There's a lot of potential targets where you just say, man, I really want to Doom this guy, but only under these specific circumstances. Sure. So it makes his job really hard. So I think that that Ten ban makes sense. The Enigma, me. just because they do have some interrupts for it, but it's just an extra Five thing that you don't want to have to worry about. And I think in this particular game with a Lich and a Dazzle, he, they're going to have a mech anyway, so he could be He's looking to rush time. just a straight up Blink Dagger, maybe mm -hmm. a BKB, and then it's very difficult for you to push into anything. And I think that at that point, uh, Navi would just have a significant advantage in not only pushing, but defending as well. So I think the Enigma ban is really good, is really good too. Yeah, and now Fnatic drafts Sven, so he is going to be filling I, I, I five armor. Yeah, Ten five seconds. armor. Not only that, taking literally no damage. Literally none. Especially when you put five on the war cry, which is plus sixteen armor. Can you like? Fanatics turn to sixteen bend. armor. Does any other thing give you that much armor ever in the AOE? Mm -mm. So in terms of this kind of oh, actually dazzle weave. I, I guess that. that, uh, that well, but that's you. over time. We're right, talking right, right. like on demand. Instant sixteen armor. Sixteen armor. Yeah. Which against slaughter against dazzle. Uh, and now Batrider pickup. I really like the Sven pick. Like on paper, I say I love Life I love Doom, I love bad. Sven. The problem is, how the hell are you laning this? Are you? Are you this I, is dubious to me. Yeah, it, I, I'm to kind of on the same page as you. To be honest, <laughs> the Meepo. Wow. Let me be honest though. Let me be honest for a second. Okay. This is actually minus the Batrider, right? Because that can be an absolute nightmare. Right now, they have so many targets that could potentially be lassoed. Like, you want to lasso Lifesteal, you want to lasso Doom, you want to lasso one of the Meepos. Sure. Who do you prioritize? Like, honestly, it's the same problem that the Doom's going to have against Na'Vi. It's like, who do I Doom? Who do I lasso? It's going to be basically down to how the team fights actually roll out. Right, I think it depends if Sven is the Five carry. And it looks like Sven is playing more of a support role, unless yeah, I would think so. Fnatic's going for a, more of a greedy or jungle doom kind of thing. Reserve it has time. to be a mid-doom though, doesn't it? I mean, look at their team. Where the heck else are they going to put these heroes? <laughs> I don't know, but it looks like we're going to...
Messi or minus armor with Navi in the form of a Shadow Fiend. So it's going to be a Dandy Shadow Fiend Hovos Slaughter. So that goes back to the discussion that we had earlier. If we have a Slaughter that's initiating and he's playing a carry row, eh, I don't know. So we'll see whether he's going to pick up that early Blink Dagger or is he going to go for something that makes him a little but tankier. I think and he has to be the initiator now with this team. Because well, if, you you just, if you just have a Batrider, right. you're taking a team fight. There's Stormbolt, Gale, potentially a Doom, Open Wounds, and Meepo Nets. That is terrifying to try to to go in and lasso anyone until you have Blink and Force Death. And even yep. then, yep. even then, it's still risky. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit torn myself. We're going to have to see how the lanes actually shape up to get a really good idea of who's going to have the advantage here, I think. Yeah, it feels like on one side you have the dream team of a very well balanced, like, oh, we have Shadow Fee mid, uh, kind of a slaughter carry, and then we have very good support, Five Dazzle, Lich, and, you know, Batrider off lane. We've seen that before. On the other side, this is like you go into a, a solo rank queue, and they're like, oh, we don't need carries. Don't pick no more carry. And the last pick Meepo comes out, and you're like, what is going on with this draft? All right, well, we're inside of the game now, so we'll hop in and Prepare see what's going on, see how the lanes are going to take shape from both teams. I, you know, the last season of Dream League, everyone was freaking out at Fnatic. It's like, we want to see No Tail Meepo. All we right, want to see No Tail Meepo. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. And it's, he's buying wards. I don't play Meepo much, but are you supposed to buy wards? I, I don't. don't <laughs> okay, first off, I don't play Meepo, but when I do, I am the I, greediest person exactly. in the world because I'm terrible at it, and I just want to make sure that I don't have a horrendous start. So... I'm a little bit apprehensive to how this is going to go down, but let's think about this way. Even if he is support, all he needs to do is get level 3, right? Right. In that sense, it's a fairly greedy pick. You can still farm the jungle pretty well, but what happens if Navi goes aggressive? What is Fnatic's answer to that? Do they just do a 2-1-2, sacrifice one of their lanes, and hope that bottom does well, and the Doom Venomancer does well enough to offset the fact that No Tail's probably going to have a really bad time? I mean, let's let's assume that Veno Doom does well, right? Right. What are they going to do? farm quickly like doom doesn't take on online until level six level seven uh, maybe you take a centaur creep and start kill killing stuff but I, I i don't know what this lane is going to do like uh, as good as veno doom is and then you have this top lane of life slayer meepo i guess meepo's jungling like we, we've been talking about life slayer yeah. is okay i don't know like this is just, just a very questionable draft and then we're going to see a uh, mid sven by honey yeah. against the shadow fiend I mean, that one is a little bit questionable. I mean, Shadow Fiend is one of those heroes that against melee, eventually you're just going to lose right. to the SF because yeah. he gets his souls, he gets like level 5, you start eating raises every time you go for CS, and your life becomes, well, not great. But if it's just a mid-game Sven, and he wants to go for like a fighting build, you know, max Warcry, max stun, and then just start trying to make things happen that way, then I think it's okay. But I'm, I'm with you, man. I think that Navi's draft, just seeing how the lanes have to be for Fnatic, I can't think that this is going to end that well for them. Yeah, and right now they're aggressive five man checking top and if yeah. they sniff out that there's a meepo jungle, I, I wonder what what's going through like the the puppy mind right now. Mm. It's like what what is he expecting in terms of laning? Cuz if you look at these five drafts, it, it's so hard to actually predict what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I, I agree. If you look at Fnatic's team especially, Navi is maybe a little bit more predictable because you got Dendi, and once you sure. see the heroes take shape, you know, with the roles and stuff, and you see who's playing what, okay, we can guess that Dendi's going to be mid, Hani's going to be mid. Okay, things start looking pretty good, but I, I'm looking at Fnatic, and I'm just like, <laughs> an aggressive lane destroys that <clears throat> lineup so hard because a lifestealer needs to be ahead. Yeah. That's a hero who does not do well in the comeback. We've seen that multiple times. He gets behind, he walks in, he dies really sure. fast. And and even if he has a decent game, you got to keep in mind that you're dealing with a flaming lasso. You're dealing with a ton of minus armor that could kill him. You're dealing with gray frost armor that uh, reduce your effectiveness. So I feel that if Hani, or not Hani, if Aero's doing well, he has to be doing really well to have yeah. a big effect in this game. Guys, guys, uh, I know this is not my part of the, the show. Like, I'm kind of sneaking into the game, which... But I, I kind of miss the tricast, so I'm That's going okay. to just like chip in for a little yeah. bit. Okay. Remember last time, uh, last season, when uh, Alliance picked Tusk? Yes. Uh, I was low the Tusk carry, and they destroyed whoever they were playing against. I don't really remember who, but they did really, really well with the Tusk carry. Uh, and just remember okay. the game, and then Alliance started picking Tusk uh, a few more times. I was talking to Puppy after that game. I was talking like, wow, this is working. I mean, is it just that uh, Tusk is really good? Uh, is it just like the pocket strategy and something that Papi told me, it's really, really hard for a pro team to win against a pub strat. Like pub strats win games. They don't win tournaments, but they do win games. Okay. It's really, really hard to prepare against those. And I think this Fnatic lineup is entirely a pub strat. I mean, there's no way you could run this but there's kind like of team consistently. 
So there's like saying, a limit, though. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. There's a surprise factor that you're talking about, right? Like maybe dealing with a hero that we haven't seen too often. So mm -hmm. maybe we don't know exactly what, I guess, Frozen Sigil, maybe what the values that, that are. That ability is really yeah, good. It yeah, is it is surprisingly yeah. uh, good. And it looks like we're actually unpausing. So yeah. we could jump back in the game. Uh, it, there's there's a limit to pop strat. And then there's also like, hey, our lanes all suck. So question mark. That's, yeah, I understand what Bruno's saying. The surprise factor is always going to be huge if you can make it happen. But Navi see those heroes and they're thinking to themselves, man, this is greed and more greed. And right. the only hero that they have on their team really to offset it is Venomancer. That's the only hero on their team that really has some kind of significant laning phase that you have to fear. And he's going to be bottom helping Doom, which if you want to argue that Doom probably has the least lane presence on the team, aside from Meepo, who's playing a support, I get it. Yeah. But still, we'll see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that this is so next level that I'm going to be blown away. Yeah, this is uh, TI6RF. Everybody's going to be doing it then, support Meepo buying wards. I also want to know what the skill build for this Fen is. Is he going to actually like you know go for the standard Storm Hammer, max it out, and then just bottle crow or just get runes and spam the wave? Or is he going to go some next level? I'm going to push the wave with Warcry and like do something sneaky. Hani also is one of those players that doesn't like do the standard stuff. He, he likes to do something different. Remember that during TI, Hani was telling everybody about his no Ray Shadow Fiend strategy. Oh, okay. And Era was sitting next to him and was just like, God, please don't ever do that in one of our games. It's so bad. Maybe we're going to see Cleveland stats. That's pretty good. It's decent, you know. Yeah. Stun's overrated. Especially on a team that doesn't have any other disable outside of Meepo Net. They have open wounds. That's not a disable. And, and, just... and, a, and a Doom Centaur Stomp sometimes. Yeah. And if life wasn't already hard enough, Puppy already denied a creep mid, so Hani is not going to be having a great time. Okay, so your question was, if Navi goes offensive try, then the Fnatic is screwed. Well, good thing for Fnatic, it's only going to be a Batrider top, 1v1 against a Life Slayer. How, how would you rank this particular matchup 1v1, assuming the Meeple doesn't come in for ganks? I think the Life Stealer obviously doesn't do great, but I don't think he necessarily like does horrible either. Funic might edge him out a little bit on farm, but you also have to remember the Meepo is here too. And double net, if you get to like level four, you can actually get a kill in this lane. Like if you land open wounds, double poof, bat rider strength gain is still decent, but I don't think it's enough to quite live through that. Just depends on how Funic plays it. He buys boots first, he realizes that there's aggressive potential. And uh, Trixie is quite low here in the woods, but I think he's going to be just fine. Kuro's base move speed's 305, and Doom unfortunately is only 290. But he's got a self. He's going to self and walk around the tree. Uh, uh, he's gonna take more juke. damage here, but I think he's fine. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. No, he ate his juke tree. He's gonna throw out the clap to try to juke back into the woods. <laughs> what is going on right now? Kuro's like, you know what, man? I give up. Ooh, Fly's coming around here. He does yeah. have Venomancer Gale. It's gonna hit on Kuroki, and Trixie's coming around. Trixie, uh -oh. oh boy. First of all time, take a Roshan, cry. maybe? Go for the Roshan tonight. You know, he wants it so bad. Honey walks in front. Oh, and the first blood goes the way of Fnatic. Okay, Tracy gets the kill. If I told you that these two line up before the game start, who's going to grab first blood? Dude, my brain right now, <laughs> it's like leaking out of my ear. I don't understand. Like, I get why Kuro was being that aggressive. He wants to really keep the Doom out of experience range. And to be fair, three heroes just chased him down mid even left. Created. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a marginal amount of room. But look at SFCS right now. He's 11 and 1. Right. Like he's almost hit every single creep, and he's got the eyes on top of that. So he's full souls already, and Honey's going to be having a bit of a hard time here. Well, Honey would be having a harder time if he didn't get the assist gold, but... Yeah, yeah but it's three people assist gold, so it's not, like, that impressive. When there's only two people there, you get a lot more. But once the third person comes in, the gold is significantly cut. Man, that patch change where they nerf all the assist gold. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious on how this Meeple is doing up top. He's doing quite okay. It's not bad. Yeah, once he hits level 3, he is legitimately one of the better support heroes in the game when in terms of nuke damage potential. He's actually kind of zoned out Funic. I also found it very interesting, I, I never got a chance to talk about it as we see a, a foray in the jungle, um, was there was a double damage on the Batrider in, in minute 1, right. and Arrow was just running straight up to him, like giving him the right click. That, well, to me, was quite interesting, because normally the, the first initial uh, reaction is, let's run from the double damage, but Arrow definitely know this matchup quite well, and he, he's actually doing really well up top. I think I've seen him play this before, actually. It may or may not have been against Funic, but he goes for the quick boots. He gets over Venom because he realizes that if he gets in range, he's even putting extra points into open wounds. As soon as the opportunity presents itself and no tails three, that hero can very easily die. Remember, I with said I had or to without the, the uh, flame rate. But it looks like bottom fly is going to be in some trouble. Havos pops the sprint. Crush is going to be there. Who's going to get the last hit? Looks like it will, in fact, be Havos. And now he's got a kill to his name, too. So it's all tied up one to one.
Okay, this is what is supposed to be happening. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to have the Navi stronger lane taking it over and, you know, so far things are going well. The, the, the first blood's a little bit of a fluke and they're getting it back. My question is how early will Dendi start involving himself with the rest of the game? Are we going to see something uh, very aggressive like Blink Dagger, which Dendi absolutely loves? Or are we going to see a little bit more of a team fire oriented like a BKB or a Shadow Blade? You know, we'll see. Okay, Dendi's uh, taking a little bit of harass in the middle. No, 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 it's just but what, What's your thought here? On are, the is he going to go aggressive quick? JS? Or is he just farm a little bit more. Just because of Navi's style, you know, I would probably lane like... more towards aggression than yeah. anything else, yeah. but I don't cool. think he necessarily has so to do that. He has a Slardar energy. for that. I do think Slardar's probably going to yeah. end up That's going blink in this case, just so he can be the one who goes come. in. Kuro is going to go Grave, so he can make sure that... The one thing that I always kind of get annoyed with... Oh, so actually, might have to hold that thought top to lane. Funnick could be in some trouble. Second net lands. Meepo poofs in. He's going to TP away. Very nicely done. Won't actually end up dying. Close call. Yeah. But good escape. But this is exactly what we talked about, right? Once Notel gets this level three, he's gonna come back with double net, open wounds. Uh, there's no running from that. So the TP uh, is is still a big victory for Fnatic. I, I consider Lane completely won by error at this point, and he could do whatever he wants. Uh, face speed upgrade. There you go. And I, I don't think Fnatic could do attack. anything else. He even buys a smoke for himself just to get to Lane a little bit quicker, which is nice. But you know, that's a precious resource being wasted. I think that as long as Navi keep their Radiant's tower alive tower. and Funnick is, is able to get attack. to the lane, spam Firefly on the creep wave to make sure that it dies and no pressure is really done here, then I think that's still kind of in Navi's favor because they have double core farming right now, whereas Fnatic, they only have one. Just depends on how big of an impact this Meepo can actually have on the mid game because you can see No Tail split his Meepos right now. He's got one towards mid and he has one top. That way he can help gank whichever lane. Fly has also made the transition mid to try to make something happen maybe on Puppy or Dendi and the creeps have been being stacked in the jungle this whole time. So Dendi's got a huge creep stack here at the large camp and he's gonna go uh -oh. ahead and eat that up so the now meeple. he's he's already level seven yeah the no tail coming around behind enemy puppy. lines he finds puppy oh. he actually cancels his net looks like they wanted to try to go for maybe sf instead but they decide you know what we're too deep we'll back out for now yeah i don't think at level one poop oh, even top as well funnick he's gonna eat the net here comes the second meepo it's gonna be another kill funnick goes down era secures himself another kill well not another kill but another kill for the side of Fnatic. Yeah, it sends him back to the base a second time here. So yeah, the first send back maybe wasn't effective in terms of winning the lane entirely. I think this one kind of solidifies it. Yep. But yes, still two core farming. If you want to check on Slaughter's farm, doing quite well. Shadow Fiend leading the entire game. And we're going to see Slaughter going actually for Vanguard, it seems like. So no initiation from Navi, it kind of a passive play. I'm, I'm completely surprised by this. The thing that kind of confuses me is why go Vanguard when your Batrider is having such a hard time? You know, Funnick is clearly struggling in this lane. He's got nine CS and a death. I could understand if Funnick was having a pretty good time not getting the Blink Dagger, but he's not going to have it for a very, very long time. So maybe they're just hoping that they can continue stacking the woods. Funnick maybe goes back and gets his Blink Dagger that way. Era manages to steal most of that large camp there with his infest, as Funnick, I think, got one of those. But he's definitely struggling. And if this is just a Vanguard Slardar, and he goes for the Max Brent, Max Crush, maybe he doesn't get Bash, mm -hmm. I think that's still okay. But running at somebody is far less effective than blinking at them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it does help him with survivability, which, you know, Fnatic does have quite a decent burst damage with that Venomancer and uh, Meepo support combo. I, can't, I still can't get over this Meepo support, and we'll, we'll see how much more impact uh, no is going to have. So far, he's actually doing quite well, you know, winning the top lane entirely, setting up ganks in the mid lane. Uh, we have never seen a support like this where he could be multiple sides of the map at the same time. This is pretty next level, in my opinion. It really is. The thing that's really risky about it is anticipating the lanes well enough to know you can pick it. Because we were both thinking to ourselves, man, if they just go aggressive, then this game is going to be well, crazy hard. This game shows you can pick it blind no matter what, because they had one of the worst draft, in my opinion, but it's working so far. I think it's just a mistake, though, by Navi. By Navi, the laning situation. Yeah. yeah. I, from my perspective, they're relying very heavily on jungle stacking for the SF and the Batrider, which I get, which is why Puppy didn't want to go aggressive in the first place, because if you sit on that side of the map, even if you have a lane fail, the hero who's in the failed lane can always collapse and try to recover that way. But we're going to see a smoke coming towards mid. Looks like they want to try to go for Dendi here. He's going to walk pretty much right into oh, No Tail and flies here as well, along with Trixie. No Doom, but I don't really think it matters. Dendi turns around. He wants to try to get a raise kill, but not going to work. Hani comes in from the low ground with a stun and they clean him up. Meepo actually secures the last hit. So it's three to one right now in favor of Fnatic, and I think they're starting to regret letting that support Meepo just do whatever he wants. Yeah, the support Meepo basically pulled his way up to level three, which is complete, something like completely unheard of. Hani now involves himself yet with another kill. He is farming for the very standard build in terms of leveling. Meepo de-warding on high ground, and he could do that because he could just poof out. He can't stun, yeah. yeah.
Maybe okay. Batrider throws a flame break, but it's going to be a little bit late. That is some cheeky stuff, but definitely worth it so far. No Tail is already level 6. Uh, Puppy's a full level behind, and that's attack. with, I think, soaking a little bit of the creep stack experience. Just goes to show how effective it can be, just having that kind of mobility, like you were saying, two places at once. Oh man, this is like, it's blowing my freaking mind right yeah. now. And Fnatic's, what, we talked about how Doom actually scales very slowly in the early game. He needs a lot of time before kicking onto online. Well, Era, you talked about how he needs a very good start. He's got that good start. He's free farming up the top lane. He's got face and drums. If we're going to see a race car life sitter, we're going to see it now. Radiance Era knows how to basically attack. take advantage of the weakness in his opponent. And I say Fnatic, or I say Navi right now, don't really have what it takes to deal with this life sitter at this moment. My question is, can Dendi even go Blink Dagger in this game? I think I, I he needs think so. a BKB. Yeah. But even if he gets a BKB and he's the one rushing it, then... Well, he's got a Blink Dagger now. Okay. Well, I guess that answers my question. I mean... Dendi is never scared. Let's just say that much, right? Like, as a player, fearless. He well, doesn't care if your team has the potential to kill him if he makes one fumbled Blink. That's fine, because he's just not going to mess it up. Like, to be honest, only Poison Sting be like, or awards really mess your Blink Dagger plan up. Otherwise, you could just really easily get away from most stuff, right? Yeah, could, I mean, they still have great. Uh, storm hammer and, and stuff, so hey. Top lane, Puppy. He's going to be having a sad time. Teleport coming in. It's going to be Curl, so he will be able to oh, save courier? his oh, courier. courier. courier? Big oh, micro. No, Aero turns. Okay, he gets it anyway. Worf. I, I guess. I mean, Aero dying is actually not that great, especially yeah. since Havos gets the kill. But Havos was just picking oh, up middle as well. Hani chasing down Dendi. He's going to be forced to pop the haste during salves up. Hani going to be forced to TP away. Doesn't want to eat a double raise on his way out. So, a lot of stuff happening all over the map here. It's, um, I don't I wouldn't say it's getting hectic. More stuff on the bot lane, though. Funic fire flying over the trees, trying to save himself. No tell, looking for the ensnare, not going to find it. Why is this allowed? Just going off the map. As Funic doomed, it doesn't matter, though, because it's Firefly already online, and Funic says, YOLO. It's ending soon. Oh, they're not gonna yeah, they, they can't get him, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh. And no tell. I'm just completely amazed by Notel right now, as he is being so effective. I cannot see another support hero like CM or, or you know Rubik having this level of impact. Just being the global, it's like it's like a support with Prophet Teleport. It feels like better. Yeah, because the Prophet Teleport actually has low impact at yep. the early stages of the game, whereas No Tail is level seven. Yep. So he has max rank of poof, and now he's even got a point into uh, into Geo Strikes. So the pressure's starting to come on here onto Navi. I'm really confused about the Vanguard, though. I don't. I think Armlet is better, especially when you have a Grave on your side. You know what I mean? You want that aggressive potential. The way it scales with the minus armor from your ulti is extremely good. But bottom, you can see. Pyro is, he's in a little bit of danger. He doesn't realize it, but he is. And Hani's just popping that Warcry, right, man. Going to town on tier one mid. Oh, no tail running in right now. No, he's not going to go for it. You, you mean uh, the armlet versus Vanguard comparison as a non-initiation item, right? We, yeah. we still, we both agree that he should be going Blink? I think Blink would have been better. Yeah. But if you're, if you think of it this way, the Dazzle can only grave one person. So if you get one Blink Dagger, you're assuming you're graving that guy. But Teleport's coming in bottom. Trixie, he pops the Scorched Earth. Nice yeah. Gale by Fly. Yeah. Should buy him a little bit of time. He might continue to chase this. Still quite a few from Navi in the bottom lane. No reactionary TPs yet on the side of Fnatic. Havos just does not care, man. Nice War Stomp by Trixie. And both Fnatic, or excuse me, both Trixie and Fly are going to be able to walk away just fine. Yep, and all the meanwhile, no is just roaming aggressively with his Meepo in the enemy jungle. He's looking for a Shadow Fiend, not gonna find him. I think if he finds a Lich or a Kuroki uh, Dazzle, it's an instant free kill for him at this point. With, with two Meepos at level 7, that should be a free kill, right? Yeah, I believe so. He's yeah. only at 700 HP, so... Again, I apologize for not knowing a lot of Meepo tech. Cause Dude, it's it's understandable. I don't think... Um, I mean, we've seen Meepo before, but it wasn't very successful. I would say that this one is very well the most successful out. I've ever seen yeah. before. Yeah, actually. easily. Because like, this... We talked about one of Meepo's weaknesses. He requires so much, and he falls off so quickly. This one, if he falls off, whatever. But the Blink Dagger is going to come out. Trixie gets Lasso back. He does have so much minus armor on him. Trixie gets blown up, and Dazzle picks up the kill. Looks like it should be a pretty easy tower. Oh, wow, middle lane. They managed to get Dendi as well. So No Tail was there. Almost dies there. Honey forced to pop God Strength. So it looks like there might potentially be a trade here. There's no Glyph on the side of Na'Vi, but Fnatic do have theirs. I don't think they're going to contest this, though. I think they're content for trading an offlane tower for a mid tower. I think that's a good trade for Fnatic. And they got Dendi on top of it. Yeah, it's a shame that Fnatic Flight does not have more mana. Like, he's actually getting a little bit more. If he had enough mana to actually pop up a couple more wards and then use that Glyph, maybe they could have saved the tower. But yeah, it's going to 
going to be a trade, but uh, obviously Fnatic very happy with that trade. Attack. They got the mid tower. Meanwhile, Fnatic's playing basically 4v5 because Arrow hasn't really involved himself uh, in most of these engagements. Aside, aside from the sniping that courier, he is also slowly pressuring the top lane by himself. So Fnatic really in the lead at this point. Especially since they've killed Dendi twice. He's the hero who is supposed to have impact, I think, the earliest inside of the game, outside of maybe Funic, right? But right. we saw Funic start, we knew that he wasn't going to have that much of an impact, so now it's pretty much on him. Havos now picks up his Blink Dagger, so there's three Blinks on the side of Na'Vi. I think this is where the game potentially could start turning in their favor because they can start taking fights on their own terms. They don't have to wait for No Tail to come out of the woods and net Dendi mid again and accidentally die because of it. So I think. Um, this is the time where Navi can start making things happen. Yep. Meanwhile, Hani picks up a Midas at 14 minutes in the game. So Tretz into Midas. What's your thought into this in terms of like granting him the level? Obviously, the attack speed is actually very Dyer's welcome for a hero like Sven. I think it is actually better on Sven than most heroes. I'd say maybe not the craziest of efficiency because he already has max Warcry and he already has max stun. The only other thing he's going to be getting is either cleave or stats, depending on how he wants to build it. But the longer the game goes, maybe they're just in it for the long haul. They know they have potentially four cores. Right. So delaying the game isn't necessarily going to be bad for them. Sure. They just have to make sure they play it right. With the initiation happening on the bot lane here, Hovol's being caught out. The meeples are just everywhere. Yeah, Wherever you don't look, that's where Meeple is. And we talked about the blink dagger choice. He's going to blink. Meeple blink. Support. Yeah. It's only 15 minutes in, but they've already killed two towers, and No Tail was like, involved. Like, are we are we just done with Dream League right now? Like, I think Fnatic Radiant's wins by default. I don't know, man. I'm I'm feeling it though. Fnatic pretty low health. Needs to be a little bit careful. No Tail's gonna walk right into him. Gets lasso. Frost Blast gonna be there as well. No Tail poofs in with the second Meepo. He should end up dying here, and unfortunately, Trixie is not able to get that Doom off. I believe the chain frost animation canceled it. Puppy, he's in some trouble. Fly with a very good ulti. There's the shallow grave on a puppy, keeping him alive for a little while. But unfortunately, Kuro is not gonna be so lucky. And Hani, he seals the deal with a God Strength auto attack on puppies. So now it's four to seven. No Tail ends up dropping, but still. Very favorable trade for Fnatic. And now they're going straight into the Roshan pit. I just have to say, that was really good communication for Fnatic. A lot of players, when you see a Grave, they just keep hitting that Grave unit. It's like, yeah. all right, I'm going to kill him. But immediately when the Grave came out, they just immediately shift uh, focus onto, I think it was Dazzle, and then killed him, and then right back went onto the Lich. And now they're going to be rewarded with the Aegis. And yeah, they lost a Meepo, but whatever. He's he's already done his work. He took so much. I think he took a Chain Frost and another like big AoE spell. So he's done his job. Well, Havos goes in, man mode. He wants to try to delay this as long as he can, but I'm not sure if he can do it on his own. Funix also nearby. They do both have blinks, but this is all five of Fnatic. Arrow is quite a bit low, but they do manage to get the Roshan, and he picks up the Aegis on top of that. So now oh, Navi, of Meepo, course, have to retreat. He finds Havos, Havos. Well, he's oh, a little bit low, but the Wraith is going to clean him out. Stuns there. Fnatic don't want to take this fight. Dendi's on the high ground, continuing to lob out some auto attacks. Trixie, he now gets amped up. A triple crush by Havos. The is going to get his Aegis popped here in just a second. Tries to toggle the armlet as best he can. Uses the rage. Dendi in the meantime going for fly. Havos still alive. This Vanguard doing absolute work. Dendi in the meantime, he picks up the triple. Here comes the Requiem on top of the Aegis. Era loses almost all of his health immediately from the damage. And Navi, they managed to turn a huge team fight after what seemed like Fnatic had just taken a huge, huge lead. So, so bravo. I mean, from Navi. it was like it was so amazing team play, but I, I think it was a mistake for Notel to jump up the cliff like that. Maybe he was yeah. feeling like they were winning the game so hard, they got the Aegis. But finally, oh, he up goes the back in. Yeah, okay, Puppy. that's a free kill. Yeah, he's going to take quite a bit of damage. No way he lives through that. And Hani's like, yep, typical carry contribution, or in this case, I guess, two contribution. We're seeing the Vanguard coming out for Trixie, but I don't think this Vanguard is going to be effective at all because if we look at the Minus armor coming out from yeah. Navi, the other day we were having a Staff Cup match and we're telling James, you're feeding hard, <laughs> please get a Vanguard, but we were up against the Slaughter that game too and you were telling me, you know, Minus armor versus damage block, you, you don't want to be getting damage block, so right. I'm not sure whether you want to get a Vanguard. I personally like playing now a little bit more. Well, I think for the cost, just the... Oh, top lane, yeah. host. he's going to get caught out. So Dyer's pretty much just dies to Era attack. and No Tail. And that's an infested Meepo, by the way, which is pretty terrifying because it's basically four heroes that can pop on top of you at any point in time. But as far as the Vanguard goes, against this type of strategy, there's very little magic damage outside of basically Chain Frost, Chain Frost and Requiem, raises. I guess. Yeah. yeah, but really, I do think that Vanguard is a little bit weird of a choice, especially considering um, nobody on the team so far is even trying to go for a mech. And I feel like if, if yeah. you're Trixie, mech would have been way better.
Yeah, actually, there there was an interesting. Uh, so you see a, a little bit of engagement up top. Fun at thinking about a lasso. Era is just so fast. Yeah. There's an interesting uh, argument in the past whether you want to get Vanguard versus Mech as a kind of a survivability item, and Mech for most hero wins out. And I think in this particular scenario, we talked about damage block versus armor and things like that. I think you want to be on the mech side as well. Um, but what's on? <laughs> we had an accidental pause. Yes, by James. I think we just had a, a thin all James pause, basically. Well, fortunately, there was no team. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, funny. Funny's gonna pay the price for that one. The puppy pause comes in. They get no tail for it though. The chain frost doing quite a bit of work there. One for one trade, but again, it's a support for a hero who is supposed to be doing quite a bit. Oh, Era taking some more damage. Dendi's got that blink dagger still. He's very close to his BKB as well, only about 400 away. Here comes the boss. He gets the crush on Trixie. The Doom is not even going to be able to be used. He just gets exploded by the minus armor. The Shadow Wave was there as well. Dendi wants more, blinks forward. I think Na'Vi might just have to be content with killing this tower because Havos is very far behind, and he's got that sting on him as well. So free safe lane tower for Fnatic. They get two kills out of that. Blink Dagger from Havos is coming in huge now. Yeah, it feels like the, the two different style of the Blink Dagger initiation, it's working out really well for Na'Vi as Havos. He's doing the same thing that Meepo is doing, but he's not dying. Meepo, yeah, he's going in, he's trading himself for a kill, and that's okay because he's a support. Havos is not dying uh, for, for these trades. In fact, they're just cleanly getting these kills, which is very important for himself uh, as he is uh, having a very respectable 2-2-6 two, two, and six score especially for playing this kind of initiating. So we were kind of giving him a little bit of doubts early on for going that Vanguard first, but Havos knows best. He's, uh, he does. He's doing really well right now. Vanguard's really good, though, when you actually have a lot of plus armor. Yes. You know, so it, it works basically the exact opposite of if you have mass minus armor, it's not Bob good. Bob Lane here, infest, teleport, and uh, there you go. Rip. So fast, so effective. Yeah, that damage. Havos, oh, he wants to go for the blink. Oh, he blinks too far. He finds one Meepo, though. He will be able to pick off No Tail. Very nicely done. He actually thought that he kept running, so he blinked a little bit far forward. But in the end, still manages to get revenge for his teammate. So, I mean, this game, we've been seeing a lot of kill in terms of trading back and forth, 11 to 11. If you look at the go chart, it's dead even. Yeah. Who do you think this favors, you know, on the, on the long term? On one side, you have four core uh, on Fnatic. One of it actually has a Hannah Midas on the Sven. On the other side, I feel like the Radiant has a little bit more mobility with the, you know, Blink Dagger on Bat and Slaughter uh, and, and, and Shadow Fiend and maybe a little bit more of a, a well-rounded lineup. If it goes, you know, maybe 40, 45, 50 minutes, who does this this favor? I think that the longer the game goes, Doom actually becomes way better than most heroes who don't get a significant chunk of farm just because you can negate the farm of another hero just by using Doom on him. Yeah. I mean, the only person that I probably wouldn't Doom on the side of Na'Vi is SF because Dooming him doesn't really do a whole lot, especially once he starts getting some right-click items. And tower. like you mentioned, Na'Vi attack. are going mass blinks, which means that they want to be aggressive. They want to start taking fights now. They realize Dyer's that this is the time in the game fortified. where they need to make the most happen. I don't really think that Na'Vi can take an ultra late game against Fnatic. I mean, a fully farmed Meepo is actually crazy hard to deal with. Lifesteal Doom and Sven on top of that. Warcry, the, the, just the sheer damage output they have and the capability of shutting down a hero and speaking up, they want to go for Dendi. Very fast BKB pops straight away. Eric goes to town. He wants to try to get a kill. Trixie in the meantime, he's going to get lassoed in the middle of the team. Havos, though, he eats a stun. Nice flame break by Funnick. Going to buy him time. Trixie doesn't get his Doom off again. And now Fnatic, they're on the run. Blink in from Dendi. There's the raise. Give him a double kill. Hani, he's on the run too. He wants to try to get back to base. I think he might just be able to make it. Still a couple of seconds left on the Blink cooldown. They manage to stun Dendi again, but Era, he simply can't go in on this. Funnick, he doesn't want to give up the flame breaks there, and Navi are diving past tier 2 towers here at the 22 minute mark, and that fight went as good as it could have. I am just so impressed with the capability of Navi stopping Trixie from ever using Doom. Yeah, it, the focus fire is absolutely insane, and it helps when you have three blink daggers to immediately go in, locate him down, and just shut him dead. I, I think that was another mistake by Fnatic. They saw Dendi, uh, arguably he just picked up the BKB, but they blinked in with three Meebo on Dendi. Dendi just activated BKB and says, okay, thank you for initiating for me. And uh, he just popped the Requiem. Also, Lifestyle was forced to actually go onto the Shadow Fiend because, well, your Meebo is already going in. You kind of have to commit so i'm not sure it was a lack of communication for the for not pointing out there, there was a bkb but they lost two towers four hero kills and we were just talking about the navi needs to actually basically turn on the engine right now and win this game in in the short short run you don't want to go into 40 50 60 minute territory uh, because they just don't scale that well well engagements like those really really help navi 
Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, man. Look at Dendi's farm right now. He's got BKB, Blink, 3,000 gold. It's only 23 minutes in. He's the highest on the net worth by a pretty decent margin. Air is still kind of keeping it close, and of course, Havos is right below him. But the thing that's kind of impressive, actually, is still how bad the early game was for Na'Vi and how quickly they turned it around. Because No-Tail was getting a ton out of this, and actually Ancients here, we might see a death for those. He's gonna get caught out by No-Tail. That blinking Meepo infest on Era proves out to be pretty damn strong. Like, you can't run from that, mm -hmm. unless you have a BKB. Yeah, That's pretty I, much the only way. I, I think this is actually the most impressive support I've ever seen. Like, the Meepo aside, like, he is just doing so much work, shutting down the enemy carry. Can you imagine a support blinking to a carry and just initiating like that? Uh, but once Slaughter picks up that BKB and he's very close to it, I think Meepo's effectiveness is going to just plummet. Like, Meepo can't actually do anything Diamond's beyond that anymore. Well, attack. the other thing is, too, Trixie, we kind of talked about how he's never been able to get his ulti off during fights. Navi are focusing him so hard. Like, every single fight, either Funic or Havos go for him. When the Roshan pit, or when they were fighting around that after Fnatic had just gotten the Aegis, Havos got a three-man crush, including on Trixie, and they just blew him up. Okay. And they've been doing that every single fight. So if this hero never gets to use the skill that he's known for, then his effectiveness has pretty much been nil, like most of the game. And it's not necessarily on him. I just feel as though he needs a better way of getting into the fight. Because against like so many blinks, dagger, perhaps? Yeah. Against so many blinks, what do you expect to do? You have to doom the proper target at the right time in order for the skill to actually be useful. And you can't doom Dendi unless he hasn't BKB'd, and then maybe you could try to go for something like that. But without any form of initiation, how does he really do it? Do you feel that maybe the other teammates of Fnatic try to get a couple items to help him? Like for maybe a force app, use it defensively when Trixie's getting initiated, or maybe having a mech on the on the Meepo. Now, mech on Meepo normally isn't a very good item. You want to go for bigger things like Axe Scepter. But in this case, he's a support Meepo. Yeah. Do you want to consider a mech on him maybe, or maybe a force staff on your Venomancer, perhaps? I think either would be good. I think mech at this point might be a little bit hopeful, you know, trying okay. to turn it around. Too with, little, too late. Yeah, too little, too late. The health is Radiant nice, sure, but I don't think it's going to make that glaring of a difference inside of the team fights. I think the initiation dictates the pace of the fight flat out, Dyer's so I think that having a four staff attack. on him or having a blink even on Trixie just to be able to Radiant's get the Doom off before he explodes attack. would be ideal. Because he has the Wolf Aura as well, and at this stage, 30% extra damage is a pretty big deal, yeah. especially when you have four cores and the majority of them doing a whole heck of a lot of physical damage. So if he dies at the start every single time, it's actually a huge hit to Fnatic. It feels like right now Fnatic, sure, we keep saying that they have full core. The problem is they have very difficulty dealing that damage. We kind of touch on it with Doom not being able to use the spell, but has Sven been right-clicking these fights? It feels like he's just... He's like in and out with Stormbolts, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, he's, he's walking in Stormbolt using Warcry, maybe. But he didn't have BKB, but now he does. Okay. So uh, this is where he goes Super Saiyan, or is he going to just get lassoed up and maybe not do much? I don't think he'll be the target of a lasso, unless they know for sure that they can kill Trixie with maybe a Slardar blink. Okay, so we'll, we'll see how, how Na'Vi wants to take this particular fight. We know what Fnatic wants to do. They want to bum rush and maybe kill as quickly as possible. Uh, or you know what? May maybe, maybe they will lasso Hani now. Because who, who else do you lasso, right? Maybe, like, Era, sure, he does a lot of damage, but is he the most dangerous damage dealer when there's Hani also? Yeah, I don't think Era is the most dangerous. I think God Strength BKB is definitely better to lasso than a, a Doom that is only actually level 2. Right. And you have Grave already, so. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they will just go for Hani. Yeah, and now the mobility gets uh, picked up even more as Funnick picks up a Mask of Madness. I personally love this item on, on, on Batrider because you just really go maximum movement speed or close to it uh, in conjunction with your Blink and, and Force Staff. So BKB is up. Force, uh, excuse me, Mask of Madness is up. So I, I think Navi is looking to perhaps take this Roshan and maybe end the game. It's going to actually still Ooh, be hard to go high ground, yeah. Ethereal Blade done, fly, and some trouble. Kind of a waste of the BKB there by Dendi. A little bit uncharacteristic of him. Flame Break, oh, he actually snipes him. No Tail comes in with the mask, poof, and the blank, but Funic not gonna get caught by that. And Roshan's gonna be dropping really damn fast. That's minus 17 armor right now. Hani on the high ground, Funic looking for him. There's that lasso you were talking about. The Doom goes off, but it's after the lasso. Hani, he can't even BKB, he just explodes. Now they're trying to go on a Havos. He pops the BKB. Kuro's here as well. It's a double kill from Danny in the low ground, throwing out the raises. Eric just on forward retreat. He says, screw it, man. I'm out of here. This is a lost fight. Give another triple kill to Dendi. He wants to try to kill Era, but he doesn't have Blink for quite a long time. And I think Navi will be satisfied with just killing Roshan. Yeah, a lot of miscommunication coming out from Fnatic. Uh, the lasso went on the most high damage dealer, we talked about it on the Sven. Man. And then the Doom came out after on the Batrider, which did absolutely nothing. You know what really confused me about that? Is that Funic didn't even blink at him. He just yeah, casually he just walked, walked up. up, and Hani just didn't BKB.
Well, BKB would have not done nothing. Like he would have. Well, still... no, he he still would have taken a lot less damage. Maybe it would have kept him alive long enough for maybe somebody else sure, on his team I to guess. do something. I guess. But or maybe he was just like took his hands off the keyboard. He was like, man, I'm dead. I Whatever. mean, Sven, you you storm hammer and right click. But yeah, I don't know. I I feel like there was a couple of misplay here and there. First of all, remember No Tail going up the hill. Uh, after that Roshan fight, and then just uh, the entire team collapsed, and then the mid fight blinking to Dendi BKB, and then the last one uh, was a little bit unfortunate with Fly dying at the beginning of the fight, but too many mistakes here. Fanatic oh, needs to find a little bit better. But, yep. Again, he just dies so fast. There's a blinking from No Tail. He actually hits three with the net. Dendi forced to pop the BKB. Puppy isn't even going to be dropping in that, and he was the main focus. Dendi gets himself yet another kill, and I think this might just be the beginning of the end for Fnatic. They it's have a glyph, the end, but yeah. they don't have, a, they have a buyback, I guess, at No-Tail, but they don't have a buyback on Hani, apparently, because he's still dead for another 30 seconds and Glyph's already been used. Okay, BKB is down on Dendi, so if you want to go on him with the Meeples, it's pretty good. It looks like they're going to do just that. The Meeples coming in right now. They're focusing on Dendi. Dendi dropping low, but they got Graves, so that's a thing that we haven't talked about too much. Well, Meeples dead. No buyback this time, and this gotta be the Rax. Yeah, I would say so. And Dendi's not even going to lose his Aegis to that Doom. Four staff to the side right there. Havos going in with another crush. It's going to be a double for him. And I wouldn't be shocked to just see them call it here. This yeah. is... Couldn't even get the Aegis off Dendi. We're on wrong this game. You know, I think the Meepo support works really well. But this is one of those situations where you know the cores and the other team are going to be going for pretty fast BKGs, sure, yeah. right? Like, Havos bought it as a third item, Dendi bought it as a second, but that's still pretty darn quick considering how fast pro players farm. Right. So, with that in mind, the Blink-Poof combo falls off incredibly fast against this type of lineup. Well, to be fair, like, let's let's take Meepo out as a support row and sub in something like a Crystal Maiden. No, 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 I'm not saying it would have been any different, but the comparison I'm trying to make is that if he was in a role where he got more farm, because he needs more items against BKBs to really become that effective. We're going to see him as a meepo last, so. and not as a support. Right, as a meepo. Yeah. I'm not talking about that particular role. We can see him actually really nice off by Fly going off, and Havos dropping quite low as well. Hani is going to town with the BKB and God Strength. Denny in the meantime, okay. he picks up a double kill. Hani, he's chasing Kuro outside of the base. Cry. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't realize that there's a giant Denny behind him, but he's going to get yet another kill. Kuro going to be Storm chopped Hammer? to death. All right. Denny's going to be losing his Aegis here. He's going to be respawning in a couple of seconds. No BKB, but he does have a blink. I think he has to blink forward. Wow, no, perfect okay. timing on the net. You couldn't have asked for a better timing than that. And it's a full team wipe. So, Fnatic, they um they don't call GG. In fact, they wipe Na'Vi off of their side of the map. Yeah, one rack's down. But hey, you know, when you have four core with the Midas on Sven, you keep playing. Now, critically, we we have we saw Meepo buying back. I think Era had to buy back in the previous, or in that fight they just won. So, it's not all just, you know, Flower and Roses here on Fnatic Camp, but you know, they, they win a fight and they get a little bit of hope as we see a uh, armlet pick up on Sven. But I really think the big difference in, in that fight was Hani was not locked down the previous, uh, in the beginning of the fight. Right. If Hani is not locked down by the Batrider, he gets to do what he just did, which is go completely ape mode and kill everybody. I, I don't imagine we'll see too much of that though. I, I think priority number one is Hani uh, from this point on. Yeah, after that kind of a fight, I think Navi just got a rude wake-up call. It's like, yep, Sven still does a crap load of damage. He's got Armlet, BKB, Midas, and Tread, so his attack speed is actually pretty significant, even at this stage of the game. So, so. as, as trolly as a question as, as is, do you want to pick up Armlet, or do you want to pick up Lincolns? On Sven. On Sven. I've seen Lincolns a lot. Actually, Era used to do it when Fnatic uh, ran Sven as a 1. Okay. I think it was during, um, uh, I want to say the Thor Open or something like that, but... They, they ran Lincolns on him because of this particular situation, like having a bat on the other team, and they ended up winning. So. Okay. So, so back to the question, do you think maybe not right now or the item afterwards, you go Lincolns? I think... Or you go maybe Blink, just go in? Yeah, Blink would be good too. It's kind of a lesser cost for the same effect. You know, you're getting your damage up time, or right. you're... I mean, you would have to initiate on the Bat Rider, which would be kind of tough. Lincolns would definitely be the safer choice in terms of being able to make sure that you do your damage because no one else really can eat the Lincolns except for maybe if they want to Chain Frost or Amp you. But yeah, Amp, Amp does have a fairly long cast range. Yeah. So. But it would be hard to coordinate that, especially with Trixie now having a Blink Dagger and No Tail also having one. So I think it would be a lot harder for them to coordinate their lasso on him if he did have that item. But at the same time, if he doesn't get something like a Daedalus, I feel like they're just not going to have the damage output to kill anyone. Yeah, you got to keep in mind that Lincoln's is a 5k go item that gives you, what, plus 25 damage, which is not exactly yeah, not great. Yeah, where you want to be. Uh, Era teeping back home. Force out Glyph. I think they're actually going to get that tier 2 tower up top with the siege unit, so that's pretty good. But here comes Navi. We're going to see whether Funic is going to be finding the Sven. Here's the infest. 
They want to try to go for, I guess, Havoa. Strixie goes in. He gets the Doom on Funnick before the last. So here comes Hani. BKB popped and God Strength. They're going to try to go on Dendi. Nice BKB disjoints the Storm Hammer. And Hani is just getting eaten alive very early. Crave, by the way, on Havoa. He's basically at full health. Era now on full retreat. The Weave doing work, taking down armor on the side of Fnatic. And Era just simply can't live through the damage output. So even though the initiation went so well for the side of Fnatic, like, honestly, that's the best case scenario. Best you could ask for. Yeah, yeah. Funnick didn't lasso. They got to jump on somebody, albeit it was Havos, maybe not the best target. That was one of the cleaner ways to start a fight that I've seen them, and they just tap out. They say, you know what, there's no way we can actually do anything else. We tried our best. The no-tail Meepo, man, I saw its potential. Yes. I just think that in this game, was greedy, but it was okay greedy until BKB started coming out. I think they just needed maybe, don't pick Doom together with it because you need another hero who can have some impact like even something like a Marana I think would have been nice sure, sure. just somebody to actually help control the map with him because then you have a second hero who can actually contribute instead of a doom who gets chased to his tier two I absolutely agree I also believe that we showcase the power of a blink dagger remember when Dendi had such a terrible time in the mid lane where he gave up two kills and he still went blink dagger like when you have enough blinks on your team each individual blink in my opinion gets a lot better because yeah. it's it's one thing to have yourself blinking in, initiating with the uh, slaughter or stun, when you have half your team blinking, and suddenly that that initial blink becomes that much more powerful.